Regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville and the City Council sitting as the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the Victorville Housing Trust. Um, at this point in time, we're going to call this meeting to order. I'm going to ask for a roll call. Council Member Garcia? Here. Council Member Kennedy? Council Member Baez? Mayor Pro Tem McEachran? Here. Mayor Cox? Here. At this point in time, individuals who want to address the City Council fill out a card. There's only one individual, Mr. Howard Shirley, is uh, representing the NID Housing Counseling. And Mr. Shirley, you can step up to the microphone. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon to the Honorable Mayor. My name is Howard Shirley. I represent NID Housing Counseling Agency. We have over 40 uh, locations across the United States. We actually have been around for about 30 years. Part of what NID um, will present to you is an opportunity for you to, to save your home. So we try and help individuals get loan modifications. We work with different banks and different agencies as well as with the state. Part of what's going on is that everyone believes that the, the housing crisis has passed us because Wall Street said so, but Wall Street and Main Street are not on the same street. We get a lot of individuals who come into our offices who still need help, and we're trying to provide that help to them. One of the uh, programs that we're going to be presenting is will be at the Burning Bush Church here in Victorville on the 15th, and we wanted to provide that information to you and to you, so that you could provide that information to your constituents. We know that a lot of them are hurting. We know that they are afraid as well. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't know if there's someone there who can help them. Well, we are a HUD-approved agency. Our agency has been around, as I said to you, for over 30 years. We have an opportunity to sit down with them. It costs them absolutely nothing. We're mandated by Congress to keep them in their home. We're paid by Congress to keep them in their home. So although it doesn't cost the individual any money, we are actually paid housing counselors. We are also certified. You can go to the HUB website and you can locate us there. You can also find us in the national industry standards, which we uphold. Part of those standards will be to make sure that the individual has every opportunity to stay in their home. There are a lot of rules and regulations that they go through, and a lot of individuals have gone through um, different types of uh, relief. You know, they go to attorneys and attorneys charge them, and they go to individuals, and they don't know if those individuals are legitimate or not. We're going to make sure that we try and help them stay in their homes and let them know that they do not have to pay for a loan modification. One of the things that we also do is that we try and give them an opportunity to um, get pre-qualified for a program that the state of California has called Keep Your Home California. That's the second page that I provided to you. The state has over $2 billion earmarked specifically to try and help homeowners stay in their home. It comes in those different four uh, uh, programs. You can see there the unemployment program. That means that if an individual is unemployed, they will have an opportunity to stay in their home and have their loan paid for up to nine months while they're looking for unemployed, while they're looking for employment. The second program is the principal reduction program. That particular program will help them bring their home down to current market value. The third program that's there is called the Mortgage Reinstatement Program. That means that an individual may have been unemployed and they got behind one month or two months. They weren't quite able to catch up. This program will help them catch up so that they'll be back um, solid again. So that way they, they don't look like they're behind 30 and 60 days on an ongoing and continuous basis. And the last program is for transitional assistance. That means that an individual may have lost their job and they don't have any income and they have no opportunity of saving their home. 10 seconds left. 10 seconds, go ahead. What's that? You have 10 seconds left. Okay, and they may have an opportunity there to, to have money to transition out of their home. So we just want your help to try and get this information out. We'll be glad to contact your offices, and we'll be glad to provide our information to you, and you can put that information onto your website if you like. Okay? If you have any questions, our phone numbers are all, all over all of the packages there. Thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, we have no further business until we... So we come back into regular session, but we do have the closed session items. I'd ask the attorney. Thank uh, you, Mayor Cox. There are four items listed on the agenda, two for the Airport Authority and two for the City Council. I understand from staff there is no need to go into closed session on items A or C, the SEC uh, investigation at this point. However, we do need to go into closed session on items B and D. B is or pertains to uh, real property negotiations pursuant to Government Code 54956.8. Property uh, pertains to hangars at the airport. It's more specifically set forth on the agenda. 
The second item for the city uh, is also real property negotiations pursuant to Government Code 54956.8, and this pertains to VVWRA property uh, on Helen, sorry, city property on Hellendale Road, Victorville, uh, <coughs> and that property is described as well as the negotiating parties uh, is set forth. On the agenda, to the extent there is reportable action, we will report that either at the conclusion of the closed session or at the commencement of the 7 o'clock meeting. A question for the attorney. You indicated that staff has indicated there's no need to go into executive session on the SEC item. So does that mean that we do not get to discuss it if we have questions? Uh, that I am typically, we, I believe staff wants to pull that item, but if, since it's there and uh, it's on the agenda, you have the option of going into closed session on that. Well, I, there may be questions. I'd rather that we do go ahead and close session on that, just in case there are questions. All right, then those items are set forth. They are not pulled. They are uh, specifically described on the agenda as airport authority item A and airport item, uh, sorry, city council item C, and to the extent there is action on those items, that will also be reported. Thank you. If there's no further questions, we'll adjourn to executive session at 5. Welcome everyone, it's the City of Victorville's regular council meeting of June 4, 2013. Uh, we have just returned from 
we had a recess for closed session. And so, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Council Member Garcia. Here. Council Member Kennedy. Here. Council Member Baez. Here. Mayor Pro Tem McEachran. Here. Mayor Cox. Here. If the city attorney would um, report on the closed session item, please. Thank you, Mayor Cox. We had four closed session items listed, uh, two for the airport authority, two for the city council. Um, there is reportable action only with respect to item D, which is city council real estate negotiations uh, pertaining to property at Hellendale Road. Negotiating parties were Logan Olds, general manager of the wastewater Victorville, sorry, Victor Valley Wastewater Re Reclamation Authority and the city manager. Uh, the reportable action first, uh, the record should reflect that council member Baez abstained from participation in the closed session. Uh, the reportable action is that the remaining four members of the council voted unanimously 4-0, uh, that they are not interested at this point in selling the city of Victorville industrial wastewater treatment plant. That's the only reportable action at this time. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. At this point, I would ask Reverend Vernon Glenn to come forward. He will lead us in the invocation uh, and please remain standing and we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by our Victorville Police Chief Sam Lucia. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving for where you brought us from even up until this very moment. We thank you, Lord, for our elected leaders, and we ask, God, that you anoint them with wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Lord, that they will lead this city into our glorious future. We ask, God, that you bless them now, Lord, in every way. And we ask, God, that you bless the entire city of Victorville, Lord, and all the ones that are present here tonight. Thank you, Father, for wisdom that only you can give, Father. We ask, God, that you go beyond all of our prayers, Lord, because only you can give us what we need. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do here tonight. Known us all. Give us all what we need. And we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to come down front at the podium. We have a proclamation and some presentations regarding our Public Works Day. Uh, the agenda says that Roe Ratliff is going to assist, but I believe Sean McGlade would be the individual, so I will meet you down front. Before I turn the microphone over to uh, John, I have a, a proclamation. Are you going to accept the proclamation? Oh, good. Thank you very much. So we're going to As, uh, Fernando Morales on Public Works. My name is Michael Whitesides from Public Works. Thank you, Thank you for being here. Um, this is a proclamation from the city of Victorville, whereas the public works services provided in our community are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives. And whereas the support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public work systems and programs, such as stormwater systems, animal control, sewers, weed control, graffiti, sidewalks, curb and gutter, streets, fleet maintenance, water services, solid waste collection, and recycling. Don't leave anything out. Okay, good. Whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends upon these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities as well as their planning, design, and construction are vitally independent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials and whereas the efficiency 
of the qualified and dedicated personnel whose staff public works departments is materially influenced by the people's attitudes and understanding of the importance of this work. Um, I now therefore do hereby join the other members of the City Council in proclaiming May 16, 2013 as Public Works Day and congratulations. Sean, do you want them to remain, or do you, is that the end of this portion? Thank you very much. Thank you. And then I'm... <laughs> and then we have a presentation by Sean McGlade, and I will not steal your thunder and let you have it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on Public Works Day, which was on May 16th, the Public Works Department hosted a field trip for some 300 fourth grade students from several schools in the Victor Elementary School District. It was held at uh, Schmidt Park at uh, SCLA. Uh, this special event, Public Works Day, enabled students to learn how the Public Works Department contributes to the quality of life in Victorville. The theme for this year is because public works are because of public works, our community is a better, safer place to live, work, and play. And it included participation from the fire department and community services department. Our goal was to educate the students about public works by providing an understanding of the uh, activities that would broaden their civic knowledge and understanding of the public works infrastructure. Nine stations were set up to demonstrate different activities. Household hazardous waste, graffiti abatement, recycling, water quality testing, uh, the sewer cleaning machine, closed circuit TV van for uh, sewer inspections, animal control, um, street sweeping, and traffic signals. The students were invited to write about their favorite public works day station, and their essay showed that we did indeed accomplish that goal. So on behalf of the city of Victorville, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank certain uh, people involved with this. Uh, from the Victor Elementary School <coughs> District, um, we want to thank uh, Kim Clare and Jeanette Ells. I'm not sure if they're here today. For uh, participating with the city and coordinating uh, with the schools for the attendance at the Public Works Day. Uh, the schools involved were Brentwood, Challenger, Delray, Endeavor, Galileo, Lomitas, Mojave Vista, Parkview, and Village Elementary. I'd like to thank all of the people in Public Works, Water, Community Services, and Fire uh, for their professional event presentations and event support. I'd like to thank the Mayor uh, for attending the event and for presenting the awards tonight. And we also had some sponsors, um, American Landscape and Maintenance, Athens Services,
And uh, finally, congratulations to the first place winner uh, who receives a hundred dollars Barnes and Noble certificate. And her essay was uh, about the Victorville's closed circuit television van, which inspects the sewers. Uh, she's from Brentwood School of Business and Leadership. Tahani Anderson, congratulations. <laughs> And also, I want to thank all of the students who participated. And it wouldn't be possible if the parents didn't participate and assist. And we really do appreciate that. So thank you all. Give yourself a, a round of applause for your efforts. And thank you again. Madam City Clerk, the presentation of the agenda and revisions. The City Council of the City of Victorville welcomes the public's participation in tonight's meeting. Persons who wish to address the Council on a specific item or on any item that does not appear on the agenda are requested to complete one of the white speaker cards located in the Council Chamber's lobby and give it to the City Clerk prior to the meeting. The Mayor will call upon each individual who has submitted a speaker card. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.3, state law prohibits the Council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. The Council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per speaker or less as deemed necessary by the Mayor. Communications are to be addressed directly to the City Council. Individual comments to staff or members of the audience are not permitted. Any individual or group who engages in disruptive conduct during the meeting will be removed from the chambers by order of the mayor. Thank you for your cooperation. All documents to be considered for approval at this meeting are before the city council. There are four revisions to tonight's agenda. Those revisions have been placed on the dais for the city council and have been made available to the public. The first one is to item number six on the agenda. There is additional language that is to be added to the resolution on that item. Second one is on public hearing item number seven. There is a minor modification to the ordinance and that language is included in the revision. On item number 11, there is a modification to the or, excuse me, there is um, a request to approve the settlement agreement with Neutro. There's some additional information that has sin been submitted in regards to that item. And on item number 12, there is a request from the staff to remove that item from the agenda at this time. And those are all the revisions I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. At this time, we have the public comment uh, section and you've previously been asked to fill out a card. I have two cards. One is for the item now, which is public comment agenda item number three. The other is agenda item number seven. And so I would ask Sharon Foster uh, to come forward at this time. Good evening, um, Madam, or excuse me, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, our council people, staff, and our visitors. I'm Sharon Foster, and I'm with the Route 66 Museum here in Victorville on D Street. A couple of things that I'd like to discuss tonight, and you, it's kind of old hat, I've been here before, um, but uh, I'd like to again uh, talk to you and see if we can't work out some kind of an arrangement or even a maybe a conference as to bringing um, more initial funds, more sources of revenue into Victorville. My, my pledge for Victorville was to bring Victorville into a destination 
rather than a potty stop. Uh, over the course of three weeks, we have had one bus tour from England. Uh, they spent substantial, 50, about 50 people. And last week and this and today, I had two motorcycle groups amounting to 50 people, again from England, and they spent money. I'd like to keep that revenue, if we can, here within the Victorville community. The people this evening, the motorcycle group, uh, went on to Barstow to lodge. Why can't we have that lodging here within the area? I think it's about time we continue or kind of think about tourism in, in Victorville. Uh, we had a very good reception with the fair. Uh, we reached people that knew we were there, went by the, the museum daily, but did not realize what the museum was. So uh, I think that we could be quite a driving force in possibly putting uh, Route 66 uh, Victorville back on the map. Uh, with my card today, I received information that they had done an article in the Sacramento Bee in regard to the museum. So it's not just the Route 66 corridor that we're getting the attention, and we need to continue with that, that volume of attention if we can. Uh, one of the other things that I want to speak to you about is uh, every year in November, the Route 66 Museum has a fundraiser. And as a 501c3, it's, it's quite a, uh, a big event for us. It's not quite the money maker that it has been in the past. But we would like to open up this event to Old Town Victorville and make it an Old Town Festival uh, with maybe the flag ceremony at the Veterans Memorial. Um, maybe we can bring some of the other uh, I, um, merchants into uh, this making a nice display. Maybe we can have an Old Town walk what, showing what the Old Town used to be, the P Penny's building, the Sears building, the Bank of America. So um, I'd like for you people to help us maybe do some additional thoughts on this. Uh, we're not asking for funds. We're asking ten, for ten mental support and telling us what you think that we really could do to, to bring back, first of all, um, Route 66 corridor and then possibly Old Town. Uh, I did bring tonight, time, I have a summary of everything. I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. Everybody's given three minutes. Uh, okay, if you wanna be fine. on the agenda, we'll be I'll more be than down. happy to put you on the agenda. You'd be more than happy to have a presentation, but we have to restrict this to three minutes for individuals who show up when we don't know what they're going to speak about, otherwise we'd have people in the audience who would wanna hear it. So it's restricted to three minutes, my okay, apologies. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. And I will explain this once more for the audience that we are required to discuss matters in public so that the public knows what we're dealing with. Anyone can address the council, but if it's not an agendized item, we don't have a discussion, we can't give answers, we can't get involved in it because otherwise we're getting involved in conversations which may lead to decision making when the public was not notified that we were going to hear or discuss that particular matter. The Brown Act is very serious. The state laws are very serious about these things of agendizing, and you've heard from all of our council members about being a very open, transparent council. For individuals who feel they want more time, they can contact staff, they can contact me, or they can submit items and get on the agenda, and then it's publicized where all, in, all individuals can appear and speak on either side of that particular issue. So. I'm sorry when people feel that I'm cutting them off, but we have to hold to the three minute period. But thank you very much for your presentation. The, on with the agenda, under the Library Board of Trustees, there were no items at the time we posted the agenda. Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, there were no items. Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, agenda item number four, written communications. Just take an action since it's just a notice, Madam Clerk. Yes, this does require an action by the council. So we'll open for a motion and a second. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Council Member Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Agenda item number five. This is a standard sublease agreement with ARC Aerospace Industry. Um, any questions of Mr. Metzler? If not, we'll open for a motion. 
Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern, second by Council Member Garcia. Motion carries unanimously. Then item number six, if you noticed before there was a revision to this item, a few words were inadvertently left out of the resolu resolution, it's been corrected. Agenda item number six, it's a resolution. A uh, resolution of the successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency approving an agreement to terminate and release disposition and development agreement by and among the successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, Pierce Brothers Investments, LLC, and Ally Bank, and authorizing the execution and implementation of said agreements to terminate and release disposition and development agreement. Here's open for motion and second. Motion by Council Member Vias, second by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern. Motion carries unanimously. Agenda item number seven. Again, there was a revision. A public, this is a public hearing item. Any questions of staff before I open the? Uh, this is a continued public. No, it's a new public hearing. Is that correct? This is a new public hearing. New public yes. hearing. Any questions of the staff before I open the public hearing? No questions. I hereby open the public hearing for anyone who would want to appear and speak on this item. And as I indicated before, I have one card on agenda item number seven. Mr. Robert Harriman. Council, I would just like to address one thing, and that's I've been in here before about it. Uh, the we need some changes in our ordinances uh, in regards to the signage that are being uh, the commercial uh, signs are getting out of hand they're not uh, they're being put on sidewalks that are several blocks away from the established business and they are like I've been in here before or talked about you got people twirling signs on public property. They're putting the city at risk. If somebody gets in a car accident, they're going to blame it on the city for somebody standing on the city sidewalk while some idiot is twirling a sign that nobody can read. It's got to stop. Do these people have workman's compensation insurance for these employees? I highly doubt it. I certainly have to have it to do work here in the city. Do they wear, are they required to wear reflective vests? <clears throat> I don't think they are required to do that either. Uh, this has got to stop. Uh, as far as the signs, uh, the, the, the signage around town has gotten extremely sloppy. And I understand uh, the manpower to enforce this stuff it has dwindled. But people are putting signs on sidewalks, they're hanging flags uh, with the business names on the right there on the perimeter of the city sidewalk and it's just looks trashy so we need to work on getting some better sign or sign ordinances and having them enforced now uh, four or five years ago that was the case you couldn't you couldn't put a sign on the sidewalk otherwise somebody stopped from the city and and told you you can't but now that doesn't seem to be the case so it's getting a little out of hand I would like the council to look at being a, a changing and being more forthright with the writing on the the issues for the signs because these people are now I'll give an example there's a marijuana dispensary somewhere down there near D Street and two blocks away there's a medical marijuana symbol on a sign in front of, on D Street, in front of the old park on the city sidewalk. So everybody can drive on D Street and see a sign that says there's a marijuana dispensary two blocks up on 7th Street. That sign should, the, the city uh, uh, code enforcement should stop there, pick the sign up, and not give it back. I think council would agree with me on that. That's trashy. That just makes Victorville look terrible. So I would ask that uh, we look at our sign ordinances and be as fair as we can and at the same time try to clean up 
the problem we're having. A, uh, a number of years ago, the developers, the developers were showing homes. They had lines of people to buy homes, and they would pick 20 signs with arrows on it in an intersection. And I do recall the city enforcing that and requiring the, the developers to get a permit and where they can and cannot put those signs. Obviously, that's not happening now. I would like to see some, some, some of that happening, okay? okay. The signage makes our city, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a face of the city. Thank you very much for your comments. I, I assure when we have the public hearings and people speak, these minutes are uh, considered by the city council. We listen to everything that's said. They're also passed on to staff. I know in this case, Bill Webb listens carefully. A lot of these amendments come up as a result of input from the public. That's where we get a lot of the information because this is your community and you have the right to demand the kind of community you want to live, live in, and we do listen. So thank you. Uh, there's no further speakers. I'm going to close this public hearing on this section. Any questions of staff at this point? If not. Chair is open for a motion and a second. For introduction and waiver of second reading. Uh, I've lost my screen. Can I get a little help? The vo voice vote oh, until I'm, we get that. Vote, oh, there we go. The, the, Thank you. Second by Council Member Vias, and just for the record, that is with the revision as presented tonight. Correct. Motion carries unanimously. That's, next item is item number uh, eight. Um, which is a consent calendar for 8A, B, C, D, E. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Baez. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Next item is written communications, agenda item number nine, consideration of the settlement agreement by and among First Assembly of God of Victorville, the California Corporation, First Assembly of God of Victorville, the California Corporation doing business as Victorville Valley Christian School, Cass Commercial Bank, and the City of Victorville, a municipal corporation located in the County of San Bernardino. Um, this has been being worked on for a lot of years. We're familiar with it, even though it started under a different council than what we have here. Um, does the city manager have any further comments on this? Uh, not at this time, Mr. Mayor. No, there's no questions. Motions uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. I, I'm being advised that in the backup material, which I can't seem to access, only because I'd Barely competent with this. Uh, in the backup material, there's there is a statement in the last sentence on compensation that the balance to be paid by the church, uh, and I think it should be paid to the church. I I don't. Can you uh, the attorney look at that section real quickly? Can you find that on there? page yeah well, without having the specific reference the the settlement agreement basically does provide for the city's payment to the church first assembly of God um, to compensate them uh, for the acquisition of property both a certain portion of property and fee title some uh, cons temporary construction easements and some permanent slope easements. Um, the amount of comp total amount of compensation to the church, the monetary portion of the settlement, uh, is $2.5 million. Um, originally, the church was seeking damages, which included severance damages, in the amount of $8.5 million. In addition to the monetary compensation, uh, there is a non-monetary component whereby the city and the church are agreeing to cooperate in good faith. Uh, to Andre, do here's the... Here's the uh so the the uh, typo I think monetary compensation total amount one million eight hundred three thousand shall be paid by the church at the close of escrow 
That, that certainly is a typo. It's the other way around. Be it should by be by the, city. by the city to the church at the close of escrow, yes. That amount should be paid by the city to the church. That that's is, a typo. That is so, a typo, and we will get that corrected, and obviously that's material. We vote on this. It will be subject to that correction. Correct. Thank you. And there are a couple of other very small uh, details that are getting cleaned up as well. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Are the chairs open for a motion? And that motion is sought is understood to include the corrections that were just made. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern, second by Councilmember Kennedy. Motion carries unanimously. Agenda item number ten. Memorandum of understanding Citygate Associates LLC scope of work and fee proposal. Any comments, Mr. Robinson? Additional comments, if not? Any questions of Mr. Robinson? I don't have any additional comments. Uh, just for the edification of the audience, this is not approving whether or not we are going to form a JPA. This is uh, taking a look at whether or not we are going to study the issue. This would uh, cause the hiring of a consulting firm hired by all four of the cities involved uh, in this process to uh, study the the cost comparison of forming a JPA, a Joint Powers Authority, to provide uh, police and or fire services to uh, to the, uh, the four cities uh, in the high desert. No further questions? Chairs up for motion. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries unanimously. Then item number 11. <coughs> Request to approve the settlement agreement and mutual release agreement between the city and neutral, along with the corresponding additional appropriations payment in the amount of $1,471,646.79. Any further comments from the staff? Any questions of the staff? I would like to just uh, request that when we approve this, that it is on the um, agreement that we have no further ongoing liability or obligation to provide steam to neutral. Uh, good point, and I hope that's the case. Staff? It, it is the case. In fact, uh, Councilmember Vias, thank you for bringing this up earlier in the day. It allowed us to get a, a full uh, written, uh, although not in a memo format, it came in an email from uh, the attorney firm who handles all of our claims, who. Uh, ultimately uh, oversaw or at least reviewed the negotiation for this um, and they have clarified in the email that it, that's the additional item certainly available to the public but it's on the dais now uh, that very clearly that under the express terms of the ESA the energy services agreement uh, paragraph 10 subparagraph C3 the city's obligation to provide steam ceased uh, once neutro steam boiler became fully operational thus once neutro constructed its own steam generating facilities the city was released from its contractual op obligations to provide steam to Neutro. The city has no future obligations to provide steam to Neutro. And this is all <coughs> new information to the council, although it's, it, it's part of uh, the, the ongoing history here. It was a good question to ask to make sure that, that it's clarified. And I don't think there's any, any problem at all, either on the side of our attorneys or Neutro's attorneys, if you want to clarify the, the motion by uh, adding that language to your motion. Is, isn't that the meaning of all the release agreements? When I see all those release uh, provisions in an agreement, I assume that means we're done. Is, it is, that, is uh, but this assumption? agreement this agreement does not specifically say that we are no longer obligated to provide steam. Uh, the reason for uh, that is the attorneys for both sides have been involved in this since '09, and their understanding since then is that that terminated in in '09. Um, so it wasn't specifically put into the settlement agreement. So it's good to add the clarification, but I don't think it's a problem for, you, for either side. Thank you. So the motion and the second will have those uh, understood that uh, that additional language would be understood to be a part of that motion and second. Motion by Council Member Kennedy, second by Council Member Vias. Motion carries unanimously.
Item number 12 has been pulled from the agenda. I was prepared to talk about that for a long time. That's going to be continued to the next regular scheduled meeting, Madam Clerk? My understanding is at this time the request is just to table the item, so there's no specific date. Thank you. And item number 13. A proposed resolution entitled a resolution of the City Council of the City of Vicksville initiating proceedings to collect storm drain charges for fiscal year 2013-14. And I want an explanation on this. I thought we were currently collecting uh, storm drain. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we are currently collecting storm drain uh, charges. Uh, annually, it needs to be approved by the council in order to effectuate that collection. Uh, this doesn't create a new charge, doesn't increase the charge, nor does it modify in any way how it's uh, calculated or collected. Or excuse me, how it's calculated. And it currently is collected now? Uh, it'll be collected the same way as it is now? No, currently it is part of your, your refuse water, uh, sorry, refuse water bill. Yes. Along with there's one other small charge. Uh, this would actually put it on to the uh, property taxes. Property tax bill. Um, and that is the change. That is the change but in the no manner in which it's fee. collected, but it's not an increase or decrease or, or change in the in how it's calculated. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, any questions of staff? Yeah. Why, why the change? Is it so that it's easier to collect if it's in the property tax? Uh, that's a good guess. I would have to agree with that. I see Sean nodding his head. Yes, if you'd like him to come down and confirm that, he no can. No way. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Take a seat, Sean. All right. <laughs> you can feel the love, Sean. I think, I think it should be made clear, though, um, it, for those residents that aren't here tonight or don't pay attention to what we're doing, all they're going to see is an increase in their property tax bill and somehow, some way, we need to get the message out there that that's not what this is. Um, I don't know if there's uh, stuffers we can put in the in the mailers that go out with the normal bills that uh, our residents receive, but we ought to do something to inform them that they're no longer being charged on their bill that they get on a monthly basis, but rather it's going to be on their property tax bill that they get from the county. Yeah, we can certainly make that clear. I don't know if it's going to be more cost effective to do stuffers or to add language at the bottom of the bill. Um, Whichever way, either but way, I think we'll, we we'll make sure something. that that's clear. Yeah. I, I can imagine they'll be all. coming in droves, complaining about their property taxes being increased when that's not not what is happening. Good point. With that, uh, chair is open for a motion and a second. What do you want a second? <laughs> <laughs> motion by Mayor Pro Tem McEachern, second by Council Member Kennedy. I don't want to second it either. Motion carries unanimously. Of course, that's why I said what I said. I wanted to make clear we weren't raising taxes. Well, I think the change that they will see that people who are renting properties where that bill went, where people signed up and it went to the renter and, of course, the, the homeowner, property owners was responsible all along anyway. This just puts it on the property tax bill, so there's no question. But there is no increase. It's just a transferring of the way it's collected. Um, we are down to agenda item number 14, uh, discussion of possible action regarding items for the upcoming city council agenda. I'm not sure where we started last week, but we'll start with Mr. Kennedy. Um, the, I, I guess this is a question. Um, when will we agendize or deal with the uh, issue at VVWRA on the uh, what we think is a potential conflict of interest. Uh, my understanding is the the board at VVWRA did not agree with our request, and uh, I'd like to know where we're going to go from there. That's a it's a good question. I ask that it be put on the agenda. I was late oh. in making that request. It is a question that, as I understand it, because this the, because the city of Victorville is a signatory to the JPA, we certainly have the right to make that request on the issue that was raised, and so therefore the appropriate action would be to agendize it, and if it is the opinion of the council to proceed, to ask the attorney to obtain that um, legal opinion from either FPPC or the attorney general. It's not agendized. I, we didn't make it, so it would be inappropriate to take the action at this time. So is it your request to agendize that for the next meeting? Yes. 
I, I, I fully agree. You've already made that request. I, I don't did need make, to make that request. I don't need to make it, too. Well, but. but I wanted the council to understand that we, we should have been on this one. I just didn't get to the city clerk in time. So Thank my, you. my error. Uh, other items? Uh, um, you know, I don't necessarily think it needs to be agendized here. But I just uh, maybe Bill can, can speak to the gentleman regarding the signage. And I think the appropriate avenue would be to go to the Planning Commission for that, right? Then keep bringing it to this level when we don't deal with that? It's the Planning Commission? Yes and no. It, the sign issues in the city have a very long history. Um, which I'm sure actually the mayor could actually speak to given the time as well as mm -hmm. my predecessor, Mr. Natick, um, and others have been run out of town and tarred and feathered when they tried to deal with it. So having said that, with the economy the way it is, um, I think enforcement has eased off. If it's not necessarily the regulations, it is enforcement, but it will be a council decision uh, to initiate that. We are, again, complaint-based, and we are going to have a workshop with the council on what priorities, what you want us to go more aggressive on, and what you want us to be more reactive on. Signage is one of those issues. Having said that, the majority of signs probably throughout the city are illegal. It's hard to begin dealing with the issue without dealing with all of them. That includes those banners out on the sidewalk that wave and the fabric ones as well as the ones on the sidewalk as well as the handmade ones as well as all the placards as well as the ones covering the windows. So if you go to almost any business in town, they've got illegal sound signs. We would need to determine, it's one of those things where you either are non-aggressive or you have to hit everybody with it. When are the, we doing that workshop? Uh, it's, it's upcoming, I think it's just after the budget, hopefully. Is that scheduled? It's not on the calendar yet, but oh, okay. it, it, it will be coming up, as Bill said, just after the budget. We're, but, uh, we'll talk about a little code enforcement a little bit more at the budget hearing. Yeah. Um, I, yes, the main suggestion I would like to make, which, which I think is the most reasonable way to proceed, is if and when we do, that we provide ample time to notice all businesses throughout the city what exactly is permitted, what exactly is not, and give them a period to remove those signs before we go out there and begin citing, you know, almost every business in town, and we have them all here. Um, so I think there's a, a reasonable way to do it. It's up to the council to decide when and how we want to go forward. But our recommendation would be to take the, the, the approach of educating, informing, putting them on notice, giving them 30 days, 60 days, something of that sort, and then going out there and and noticing issuing some type of notice to to the businesses so there is a a reasonable approach we just need to be in unison as to when we are and you need to be prepared for any repercussions okay so i won't agendize it now because we have an upcoming sure. workshop and it will be there sure and it is a more it, it's 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 not necessarily a code issue it is a code enforcement issue okay yeah. just a few years ago maybe two or three years ago we had businesses coming to the council asking to be able to put up some banner signs and things that are outlawed by the code. And the council gave a specific direction, as I recall, to staff to, to be more lax because of the economy, essentially. Um, I don't know if that was an official direction that had a, a, an end date, but I recall that when they were giving that direction, it was very clear it was for a, a temporary time frame, a couple of years, until we started to grow out of the recession. I, uh, I, I remember that, and I doubt that this council is going to give that kind of direction. Mm -hmm. I hope not. Because it's always because we're going in a recession or coming out of a recession or about to have one or give people a chance or something. And when we had the recession, we had to cut back on a number of employees. And unfortunately, one of the things we cut back was code enforcement. People discovered that we didn't have any officers on the weekends. And suddenly, we just had a proliferation of signs all over the place that were illegal, and they knew it. Um, we we're back on our feet. I think the public input now is the demand that we enforce our ordinances. I'm hearing it more and more, not from one or two individuals, but from a lot of individuals. And interestingly enough, I'm hearing about the sign enforcement from other business people who, f who feel that they have unfair competition by not enforcing it uh, from what's going on. So I think you're going to, it's a, it's a good opportunity for the city council to look at the ordinance in itself 
and make sure that it's reasonable, but make sure that the people know that it will be enforced, even if it has to be amended, but it will be enforced. Uh, Councilmember McEachran, I'm sorry, Councilmember Wise. Councilmember McEachran. I have nothing. Councilmember Garcia. Uh, Doug, do you have any items? Uh, not for the agenda, no. Uh, are you moving on to reports? We'll go to reports and start okay. with you. Okay. Um, just so the council's aware and the public's aware, the uh, hearing with the California Energy Commission is next Tuesday, or excuse me, next Wednesday morning. Uh, so I will be flying up there with one staff member to uh, hopefully bring back a positive decision that we get a five-year extension on that permit to construct the Victorville 2 power plant. Um, then uh, the following Saturday, the 15th, um, I don't think the public is aware of this yet, and I hope I'm not the, announcing it out of turn, but uh, there is a softball game being planned, or a softball tournament between all of the five cities of the high desert. I don't know if everyone's got a team together yet. We're still struggling to, to fill out our team, uh, in all honesty, and that is going to be at Maverick Stadium on the 15th. Uh, and then uh, shortly after that, on the 18th, we are planning a budget hearing. Uh, Carol Lee will be in touch with all the council members once we dis determined exactly how much time we'll, we'll need to try to, uh, to get that, that scheduled. Uh, the intent of the staff uh, is to bring that forward on the 18th um, with an option of a full approval on the 18th or an option to continue the budget hearing to the 25th the following Tuesday, uh, keeping in our tradition of trying to schedule things on Tuesday nights. Um, if the council has any changes, recommendations, or anything they want modified uh, prior to the, the final approval. Thank you, Doug. Uh, the underlying rumor is that all five council members will be playing. Will be what? Never mind. <laughs> Actually, uh, we've made an agreement. Uh, Jim Cox will be umpiring from behind the plate calling balls and strikes, and I'll be umpiring at first base, and the two of us wish all the other cities a lot of luck. <laughs> We'll let you tell uh, Mayor Kari Thomas over in Adelanto that what the plan is. I'm not going to relay that message. The, the ball field's in Victorville, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> no, it is in Adelanto. Oh. In Adelanto. <laughs> Maverick Stadium. So. Councilmember Garcia. Any reports? Any? Yeah. Councilman Keckman? Yeah. Councilman Kenny? Uh, just, just one thing, uh, and I, I share the speaker's concern about city signs. Um, ordinances, enforcement, uh, it's a perplexing problem, particularly at a time of uh, with the kind of budget constraints we're dealing with. I dealt with a phone call over the weekend. Uh, a new residents moved to Victorville with a barking dog next door. This poor lady, I, I believe what she told me, she hadn't had a night's sleep in nine days. This dog barks all day, all night. They've complained to the police. The police have been out once or twice. I mean, it's a... It's a whole process for dealing with, and the neighbor with the dog's attitude is, and he told his new neighbor, they won't do anything about it. So you can complain to anybody you want, and they won't do anything. Now, she got my number and called a council member. A citizen should not have to call a council member to get action. And so she's not going to get any special treatment, but we hope a process is in place. But this kind of enforcement issue, these, these enforcement issues are just troubling to us constantly because the barking dog is right it's a trivial who, who cares police have much more important things to do than that unless you're that lady who can't get a decent night's sleep with three little kids for nine days and for her that was a, you know that's a major crisis so how do we uh, deal with all this dealing with limited resources tough question to, and I have no answer it's a more. tough question, but lack of enforcement of the rules breeds discontent and disillusionment and distrust of your government. It does. If, if we're not going to enforce it, we need to take it off the books. And if we're going to have it on the books after we conduct a public hearing and we believe we're doing the best thing for the public, then we need to enforce it. I have no further items. Thank you very much for participating in the night's meeting, and good night.